it is a great distinction of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the very religion he founded bears a name, the literal meaning of which is peace. The word Islam indicates the very essence of the religious system known by that name. The teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam guarantee and establish peace at all levels and in all spheres, individual, social, economic, national, and international. One who becomes a Muslim not only enters a safe haven, but also guarantees it for others. The Holy Prophet defined a Muslim as one whose word or deed calls no harm to others. Peace is the greeting of Muslims, and peace shall also be the greeting of the dwellers of paradise. The teaching of Islam has been further elaborated and emphasized by the founder of the Ahmadiyya community, whom we believe to be the promised Messiah, alayhi salam, and the reformer of this age. Although the Ahmadiyya Muslim community is a small community, it is a standard bearer and the representative of the true teachings of Islam. The promised Messiah, alayhi salam, said that by announcing his claim, God Almighty has placed two burdens upon him. One is the right of God, and the other is the right of God's creation. Today, his influence has spread to every corner of the world, including United States. The Ahmadiyya Muslim Community USA was established in 1920 as the first American Muslim organization. The New Orleans chapter was founded in 1924 and includes members throughout Louisiana, as well as Mississippi and Alabama. Alia Ali from Kenner, Louisiana, was the first African American to accept Ahmadiyya, the true Islam, which was in 1921. This chapter built its first community center in 1970, but opted to demolish it after Hurricane Isaac caused massive damage. Their new community center, Darul Alman opened its gates on November 16, 2013. High above the entrance to the new Ahmadiyya Muslim Community Center are the words Darul Aman. Translated, it means House of Peace. President of the Ahmadiyya Muslim Community of Greater New Orleans. Uh, As some of you may already know, that our previous mission house was completely devastated and decimated during the fury of uh, Hurricane Isaac. And it became inhabitable for a very long time. But through the donations of our members all over the United States, we were able to buy this building as our new community center. Each of you who worked in any way towards seeing this building become a reality did so because of a caring heart. We know that those who donated time, money, and talent did not do so for recognition. It was your generosity of spirit and caring that helped us recover from a devastating disaster. We dedicate this center to the angels without halos and wings who carried us on their shoulders to see this project through and to our loving God for his blessings and grace upon all of us. This center is what we are about. It is what our community is about, and that is peace, harmony, goodwill, and brotherhood. More than 200 members of local and national Muslim communities, along with several local, state, and federal dignitaries, attended a special dedication ceremony on November 16th of the new community center. United States Senator David Vitter of Louisiana attended the ribbon cutting ceremony took a guided tour of the center, and delivered the keynote address. Thank you very much, and thanks to all of you. I am truly uh, pleased and honored to be here at this important dedication of the Ahmadiyya Community Center. And this community center personifies so many important things about all of us and about all of our shared American experience. It symbolizes, personifies one of the many things that makes America great, 
being a nation of immigrants, being a nation of folks coming from all parts of the globe and uniting in peace around common principles, particularly of freedom, including religious freedom. Secondly, given that this is a response to the devastation of Hurricane Isaac, it's a wonderful celebration of our Louisiana resilience uh, that has been discussed. Uh, and it's a wonderful trait Louisianians share. And this is another great example of that can-do spirit and that resilience. Perhaps most importantly, uh, I'm here to celebrate and to honor uh, your tradition of freedom and tolerance and peace. Obviously, with all the conflicts in the world, including the conflicts involving Islamic extremism and violent extremism, your community's example and message is more important now than ever before. And so perhaps more than any other reason, I'm here to thank you and encourage you in that practice and in that articulation of that vision of peace and religious tolerance. Unfortunately, in so many parts of the world, the only thanks you get for it is persecution. Uh, and I understand that. Certainly, I'm actively involved in Washington in doing everything we can to support your community around the world, including, I might mention, a specific proposal that I strongly support. It's being spearheaded by good friends of mine, Congressman Frank Wolf of Virginia and Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri, to have a special envoy in the State Department devoted to nothing but minority religious rights in the Middle East and Southeast Asia. This community center personifies so many important things about all of us and our shared American experience, Vitter, Republican Louisiana said. It personifies one of the many things that makes America great, being a nation of immigrants, a nation of folks coming from around the globe and uniting in peace around common principles of freedom, particularly religious freedom. Obviously, with all the conflicts of the world, including the conflicts involving violent Islamic extremism, your community's message is more important now than ever before. Vitter continued, I'm here to thank you and encourage you in that practice and that articulation of that vision of peace and religious tolerance. Other elected officials attending were Kenner Mayor Mike Yenny and Jefferson Parish President John Young, both of whom presented proclamations to Ahmed commemorating the opening of the new center. But first off, thank you all for coming to the city of Kenner and, and, and actually picking your community center here in the city of Kenner. Most of you I know are many Kenner residents. Um, Ramon, Mr. Sid, I, you know, I thank you all so much for inviting me into y'all's community and thank you all so much for uh, always being a part of this city and, and reinvesting in our community because that's what a lot of y'all have done and I certainly thank you for, for We're uh, doing everything we can to build a better community for all citizens so we certainly hope you do the same thing I did and enjoy Kenner and enjoy everything that your community has to offer with this great community center and I too have a proclamation to offer that John Young pretty much read verbatim so Moby if you just want to come up I'll just present it to you. Uh, I think it's, as Senator Vitter alluded to, the, the greatness of America is the fact that we are and have always been a melting pot. The other significance to this event today, your dedication of this community center, is the pilgrims that came from England and founded uh, the colonies and eventually what became the United States of America came primarily because of religious freedom. They were seeking religious freedom to practice religion of their own and not a state-sponsored religion. And that's what makes America great, our strength and our diversity. All of us sitting here today uh, came, our forefathers came, but we may have come from other countries because other than the Native Americans, nobody was here when the pilgrims came. And we've been through a lot of trials and tribulations, but I think the fact that we have uh, citizens who come from different countries and different backgrounds and different religiouses, as long as we continue to communicate 
and have dialogue, we're stronger together than we are apart. And I think that's what makes this country great. I want to thank you for your contribution to this community of Jefferson Parish. I want to pledge to you, not only get involved in your particular community, in this community center, but get involved in the larger aspects of the city of Kenner, of the parish of Jefferson, because this is your city, and this is your parish as well. And I pledge to you as president of Jefferson Parish, we want you to get more involved in the overall community, and we want to work with you and your community to make Jefferson Parish a better place to live, work, and raise a family for all of our citizens so that they can all uh, achieve the true benefit of the American dream. And Kenner Councilman Keith Reinaud and Kenner Councilwoman Maria DeFranchise. Also in attendance were former Lieutenant Governor Jimmy Fitzmaurice. Our honored public officials are here with us today and you should be honored by their presence because they represent some of the finest leaders in our country. Of course, I endorse wholeheartedly everything that Senator Vitter has said. I compliment you on your wonderful leadership in establishing this community. Having lived here all of my life, I know many of you personally. I know and I understand your commitment. And for the time that I have, I continue to offer my humble servant. I want to leave you with one thought today. It's easy for us to speak here before the microphone and tell you what things ought to be and what you should do. But I think it's important that we give you a message as to what you can do. And that's my message to you at this time. Build a better world, God said. And I answered humbly how. This world is such a vast, large place, so complicated now. And I, so small and useless I am, there's nothing I can do. But God in all his wisdom said, just build a better you. My challenge, build a better you. Thank you very much. U.S. Attorney Kenneth Polite, former U.S. Attorney Jim Letton, FBI Special Agent in Charge Mike Anderson, Amjad Mahmoud Khan. I've had the opportunity to visit New Orleans, and that was in 2006, roughly six months after Hurricane Katrina. And I remember getting in a car and driving, just driving. I just wanted to see the city. Because what I had seen at that time was just images from the television. And I saw some of the worst affected regions of Louisiana, particularly the Ninth Ward. When I saw firsthand the decimated streets and neighborhoods with the wrecked homes and the heaps of wood and the mattresses on the road, my heart sank. And I came with a very specific purpose. Um, I was offering free legal aid to rebuild five houses of worship that had been uh, ravaged by the storm and two schools. This is a community that's the, one of the oldest American Muslim organizations. We lay roots in 1920. In fact, in Louisiana, our first chapter, our first you know, mission house was set up not too far from here in 1970, and it also had flood damage. But our roots are actually traced back to 1924. On the flight here, I was reading a letter from J. Livingston Mott. He was an American convert to our community, a Muslim, he sent a letter to our religious leader in 1924 from New Orleans. I mentioned this to the senator earlier. And he mentioned about the vibrancy of the community in the 20s in New Orleans. American Muslims in this town. And that's where our community lays its roots. But what's unique about our community is that we're united by a single leader. The Khalifa, Mirza Masrur Ahmed, His Holiness, we call him. He is a guide to tens of millions of people worldwide, and his directives aim at fostering an environment of absolute justice, human welfare, and social harmony. And under his leadership, our community has built over 15,000 mosques, 
500 schools and 30 hospitals around the world. We've translated the Quran in 70 languages. We propagate the true peaceful teachings of Islam through a 24-hour satellite network, Muslim television, Ahmadiyya, through the internet, <coughs> through print, and we've set up an independent disaster relief organization, Humanity First, which has sent volunteers in all the major disasters worldwide, including the current typhoon in the Philippines, Hurricane Sandy last year, and Hurricane Katrina and Rita. And the community has collected 35,000 bags of blood in three years in a new initiative we call Muslims for Life, our effort to honor the memories of those who lost their lives on 9-11. This is just a glimpse of who we are as a community. And here in Louisiana, as I mentioned, we have a small, humble community, but we're very strong. The National Vice President of Ahmadiyya Muslim Community, and Imam Azhar Hanif. Isaac being one of the sons of Abraham, we shouldn't think that he's a cause of destruction. <laughs> Isaac was always a cause of reconstruction of the basic foundations laid by Abraham. And today as we're here, again, I want us to embrace this as our day, not the day of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. The prophet Abraham, when he raised the foundations or reconstructed the house of God in Mecca called Kaaba, he offered a prayer. Oh my Lord, make this town a town of peace and security. The word in Arabic was Amina. And this house behind us that we're opening today is also called Darul Aman or Darul Aman. The same word which Abraham prayed for, make this town a town of peace and security. And then he prayed, and provide all of the inhabitants in the thamarat of the fruits or the sustenance of life. After he said this prayer, he added one additional clause. Which inhabitants was he referring to in this prayer? All of those who believed in Allah, God Almighty, and the final last day. That was the prayer of our patriarch in three great religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. And he didn't thereby disqualify any of the members of this spiritual family from that prayer. However, in response, God then addressed Abraham and said, you have prayed for those who believe in me in the last day. I am going to bless even those who don't believe in me. Even those who don't recognize you as a prophet or don't accept faith as you expressing it, I will even give them some blessings for a period of time. What period of time is that? It's the time we all live on this earth. I've traveled to Africa, Europe, Americas, the Middle East, I've been so many places. I have yet to come across a people who have not received the blessings of God. And that's the blessing of the God of all houses, the God of creation, the God of Abraham and Moses and Isaac and Ishmael and Jacob and Jesus and Muhammad and any and every prophet that ever appeared on this land. That is the blessing of even people who didn't have a God and didn't have a house and didn't have a faith. God still provides for them and thus he's telling Abraham, don't just pray for the believers. Don't just make this a house of worship for the Ahmadi Muslims, or the Muslims, or any faith group. This is a house, a center for all of humankind. This is a community center in the greatest sense, the sense that God is trying to teach us today and every day. And I truly hope we can bring that message into our hearts and into our efforts and into our, our plans. Because recently in Auckland, New Zealand, our Khalifa, the head of our community, he mentioned this to the people sitting there. And he said, I know for the most part, when you think of a, a, a community center by Muslims or a mosque being built in your, in your neighborhoods, you step back and you wonder. You almost fear that are these the groups that are going to create some terror plots in our land? Some disorder and disruption? 
or are they going to bring in our community amina, peace and security? And that first prayer of Abraham is our prayer today, to let us all know, to let you know, to let this city and town know, to let this state and this world know that whenever we build these places, it's only for this purpose, as God taught Abraham. We pray, Rabbij al baladan amida, oh Allah, make this city of New Orleans and every city in this nation, every city in this world, places of peace and security. And provide all the people with the fruits of sustenance for their needs so we can all live in peace and harmony, having our basic needs met. And I then would encourage you, today this is your day. Today this is your center, it's not ours. The Ahmadis are only here to look after and care for it. That was Abraham's duty, to purify it, to clean it, to make it neat. And it's a beautiful place inside. And trust me, if you haven't been inside it, you're in for a wonder. Because all I need is a rough roof like this and this floor. It's enough I need to say my prayers. I don't need much more. That's more than Prophet Muhammad had in his house. He had a dirt floor. He had a, a palm thatched roof. And it would rain. It would leak on his head. And he'd, he'd, he'd prostrate in mud. And, and the dirt below his feet. That was enough for him. But to make it your center, if I built that one, no one's showing up. And now, please pour your heart and mind and soul into coming here and working with us in projects to keep improving the lot of all humankind. One point which uh, we always keep in mind is that these facilities are open for everybody. There are no restrictions. Anybody who comes and wants to utilize uh, that facility, we are open and uh, we appreciate uh, uh, their cooperation with us and working with us. About the mosques, especially God has said in the Holy Quran, Anna al Masajid Alillah, that in reality the, the mosques, the house of worship, are uh, owned by Allah. <clears throat> when we talk to our members, we highlight some fundamentals. And these fundamentals are very important in this time and age when, uh, unfortunately, many Muslim clerics have done things which have created a wrong impression of Islam. People have uh, misunderstood the religion of Islam. And uh, a great uh, responsibility is on those Muslim clerics who have given this uh, horrible interpretation of the Holy Quran or the tradition of the Prophet. I, I remember <coughs> once I was uh, delivering a lecture in uh, the northwest of uh, Canada. The, the name of the place is White Horse. And I met the, the mayor of uh, that city and uh, she said, uh, we never had a lecture on Islam. And uh, this was a, a, a setting of uh, interfaith. And when I started uh, that uh, lecture and I started reading the verses of the Holy Quran, about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and about the miracle birth of Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, and uh, our relationship uh, with our Christian uh, and Jewish brethren. In the refreshment break, a lady came and she was crying. And she said, I've never heard a Muslim scholar before. And I always believe that you are all a bunch of terrorists. You are all allowed to kill Christians and Jews. And this is perhaps your faith that you get out and kill Christians and Jews. And then she, she said that today I have uh, heard something positive first time. And can I say to you that you are my brother in faith? And I said, in reality we are because we are all children of Adam and we are all followers of Abraham, as uh, Imam Hanif said, and we are all uh, one people and we are all one nation. And this is it's unfortunate that we see this, uh, how uh, humanity has been uh, divided. 
we teach our young young generation our children who are born and raised here in the beautiful country of United States of America that always keep in mind that Islam means peace when we say as is the same from the same root and this is the same root of Hebrew when you say shalom peace every day we say assalamu alaikum peace be on you in the Holy Quran we say that God is a salam which means he is source of peace and security and how could that God who is the source of peace and security ask us and get out and kill people who are innocent and those who haven't done anything wrong so this fundamental point is uh, again and again highlighted in the Muslim community. We also tell them that you never create disorder. I, I see, you know, the presence of uh, law enforcement uh, uh, agencies and, and, and we, we, we are very proud to tell them that uh, continuously we tell our children, we tell our men and women, we, we talk about not only in our community centers and our mosques, but in our homes that Islam means peace and Islam does not give you the license to create disorder of any kind. You can go out and, uh, uh, you know, be part of uh, um, a, a, a movement which promotes uh, civil disobedience or you cannot be part of any strike. You will not go and, and break the windows. You will not even protest. Even the name of Prophet Muhammad is uh, blasphemy. You, you, you will never ever go on the street and break the windows or, or burn properties or burn churches. And, and, and unfortunately, many Muslims have done it. And that is why I'm saying that this point has to be mentioned again and again that this is not Islam. I know when that uh, cartoonist in uh, Denmark, he made some cartoons of Prophet Muhammad. Uh, when the news came, seven churches were burnt by some unfortunate Muslims in Nigeria alone. There were churches burnt uh, in the recent uh, weeks in, uh, in Pakistan. So how can you do that? So because God says, and I quote from the Holy Quran, in Allah la yuhibul fasad, Allah or God does not uh, does not love, does not like any kind of disorder. So, as mentioned earlier, we have been very vocal on these issues. After 9/11, we were the we were the first group among all the Muslims who condemned this uh, massacre this crime against humanity. And we said that uh, these people who say that we are Muslims, we have done it. And unfortunately, there were some people who were celebrating in the, in the streets of some Arab countries. And we told them, this is unfortunate. This massacre, this, uh, uh, this crime against humanity cannot be in the name of Islam or in the name, for that matter, in the name of any religion. Because no religion would give you this kind of uh, authority that you get out and kill innocent civilians. Now, there is also a, a very interesting question which has been raised in the past when uh, a person, a Pakistani, Faisal Shahzad, wanted to detonate a bomb in uh, Times Square. And uh, we had uh, in Times Square a press conference. And we said that uh, we, will, we will tell people that Islam means peace, but only another question was raised, can we trust Muslims? A person living in my um, neighborhood, like Faisal Shahzad, who was uh, an engineer by profession, who was a family man, I think he was, had one son or two, two, two children, and then one day he became a terrorist. So people started asking this question, can we trust Muslims? How can we, you know, a, a poll was done, uh, would you like to have a Muslim as your neighbor? And majority of the people said no. So we, we took this challenge. We said, okay, we will not only talk about peace, but also highlight another 
tenet of Islam, which means that we must be loyal to our homeland. There is a verse in the Quran which says that you should obey God and his messenger and obey those who are in authority. And this is not a political statement. This is our, this is our religion. This is our faith. And Prophet Muhammad says, Hubbul Watanem in Al Iman, that you should, uh, uh, the love of homeland is part of your faith. So we gave this very strong message not only to the Muslim, uh, non Muslim, but also Muslims. And we, we, you know, some people said that you have, you have used very harsh words. And I said, yes, I, I mean it. I said, all these Muslims who think that their loyalty is somewhere else and they are not loyal citizens of the United States of America, why are they here? They are getting the best environment, business environment, they get a business, beautiful uh, atmosphere here in this country, they get uh, excellent university uh, you know, education for their kids, and then say, we are loyal to Afghanistan because we were born there. I said, you are hypocrites and you have no right to sit here and you have no right to work here. Go home. And if you are not loyal, you are disobeying Prophet Muhammad and you are disobeying the Holy Quran. So we highlighted this. And uh, as I said about 9-11, on the 10th anniversary of 9-11, uh, President Obama decided that uh, it will be a nationwide uh, Remembrance Day. Uh, we did not use the word Remembrance Day, but uh, we will remember the victims of 9-11. And I was uh, one of those fortunate ones who were invited to White House uh, for a dinner. Uh, that was in the month of uh, Ramadan, uh, our fasting month. And President uh, spoke on this, uh, uh, this massacre and uh, this crime against humanity. So I met the President and I said, we have decided that we give a strong message on this 10th anniversary. We will give blood to save lives. And we say we are giving blood to honor the victims of 9-11. And the uh, president was so happy. He, he, he was uh, with, with warmth. He, he shook my hand. He said, no Muslim has done this before. So I, I'm reporting to you that by the grace of God, and we, we think that about 35,000 pints of blood have been collected. Where we have gone to the churches, we have gone to the synagogues, we have, we have gone to FBI, we have gone to the cities and the mayors and the universities, we have gone to the state houses and we have gone to the Capitol Hill. And we had these blood drives with hundreds of them all across the country. And not only that, we, we put those slogans on, on the buses, on in metros, and in the newspapers, and elect electronic billboards, saying, uh, come and give blood and honor the victims of 9-11. So in last three years, according, you know, according to the Red Cross, they say that one pint of blood saves three lives. So according to this, by the grace of God, we have uh, saved 100,000 lives in the United States of America. Against those, <laughs> and we are very happy, and I, I want to acknowledge that we had excellent and beautiful, uh, you know, uh, cooperation with the, with the faith groups, and uh, uh, I, I acknowledge uh, what they have done. So now, uh, I, I'm just saying the last word, that uh, why I'm saying this. I'm telling you that you are dealing with a community who believes in peace and not in terrorism. I'm telling you that you are dealing with a community that believes in loyalty to homeland. You are dealing with a community that is ready to sacrifice for a good cause. And the Holy Quran says, Ta'avanu al al that don't see who is there. See the cause. If the cause is good, you should cooperate. And if the cause is bad, don't cooperate. So I can tell you that all these um, great leaders from all different levels of the government and from the law enforcement, you can count on us. 
and you can get our cooperation on everything which is good. And let us work together and let us give a strong signal to the community that we will not tolerate radicalization of religion, we will not tolerate any kind of extremism, we will promote peace and harmony. May God bless you all. The renovation of the two-story, 8,000 square foot center began a year ago. The first floor includes an office and library, two prayer halls, and two conference rooms, one each for men and women, a dining room, kitchen, and a recreation center. The cost was approximately $1.2 million. The caring hearts which helped to renovate this building gave not only financially, but also gave their time, Emmett said. This whole project was done with passion, keeping in mind our motto, which is love for all, hatred for none.